Hey, what's up guys? In this project, we're gonna CNC mill double-sided PCBs. This is a shield for the Circuit Playground Express that allows you to easily connect jumper cables. For breadboarding the Circuit Playground, you'll need some special alligator clips with jumper cables. It's nice because there's no need to solder so you can quickly start prototyping. But connecting lots of components can become a little messy and cluttered. Dave Astell's guide on the Adafruit Learning System shows how you can DIY your own shield for the Circuit Playground using PerfBoard. So this got me thinking if I could mill my own using the Bantam Tools Desktop CNC. This machine is great for making custom PCBs and their software makes it really easy for beginners to get started. So I designed a shield in Autodesk Eagle using Lady Ada's PCB design. I referenced the pin layout and board dimensions to make a PCB with standard header pins. The traces and clearances are set up for milling so it's optimized for machining with a single tool. The Bantam Tool software has preset profiles so it's easy to configure the material. The 3D workspace allows you to visually see everything making it really easy to place multiple copies. In order to do double-sided PCBs, first we'll have to set up the fixture. This alignment bracket is secured to the edge of the spoil board with machine screws. The tool head uses the bottom of an end mill to probe the edges of the bracket. This touches various areas and stores the offset so the machine knows the exact placement of the material. My plan is to use a 132 inch flattened mill to do all of the milling operations. This is my go-to tool for cutting traces, holes, and the board outline. Setting it up in the software configures the settings and automatically probes the spoil board. These double-sided FR1 boards from Bantam Tools are pre-cut so they fit nicely on the machine. Wiping them down with some alcohol and a paper towel will get rid of any grease and oils. I'm using double-sided scotch tape to secure the PCBs to the spoil board. I like to space out the strips so there's clearance between them which will make it easier to remove later. We'll need to align the board to the lower left corner with the edges being as flush as possible. You want to apply pressure evenly across the PCB to fully adhere it to the bed. For the top layer we can set to only cut the traces so we'll save the holes and outline for the bottom layer. And once we're all set up we're ready to make some traces. The software configures the feed and speeds automatically. The cutting depth is set to default but it can also be customized. I'm using a fan bit to blow away the dust. It attaches to the cutting tool. This took about 5 minutes to cut the three boards which is really fast. Once finished, you'll want to use a vacuum to clean up the dust. Before removing from the bed, I like to use a Scotch-Brite pad to lightly sand away any burrs. Here I'm doing the alcohol trick to soften the adhesive from the tape, and this makes it much easier to lift the board off the bed without bending it. I use a thin spatula to get underneath the board and in between the strips of tape. Next up, we'll need to add some more tape, this time to the top side. Then flip the board over so the artwork is facing down and towards the right side. Now we can line up the lower right corner with the alignment bracket, again being as flush as possible. Once again, it's a good idea to wipe down the surface. In the software, we need to make sure to set the bracket to the right side. Also need to turn on the holes in the outline for each board. Once we start it back up, the machine will run through all of the traces first. Then it'll drill each hole. After that, it'll take a few passes to cut the outlines. This process takes about 10 minutes with all the traces, holes, and outline. Still, it's a very quick process. After that, you'll want to spend some time vacuuming all the dust. There's a good amount here since we cut multiple copies. Again, using a piece of Scotch-Brite to knock out any rough edges. Doing the alcohol trick here yet again, being very cautious with the spatula, trying not to mar the copper surface. If you look at the other side, you'll see the outline didn't cut all the way through, but that's easily fixable. You can use an X-Acto blade to cut the thin layer of copper. Just follow the contour of the cut and be careful. You can also cut away any rough edges and excess. I also used a needle to poke holes for each of the pins. 
I'm using strips of header to bridge the top and bottom layers since there's no through hole plating here. These two are spaced out to fit nicely on top of a breadboard. So you can lay the board flat on top which makes it easier to solder. I set up the header pins with the oblong shaped pads because I found it easier to solder since it has more surface area. I needed to remove the plastic holder from the header so that I could solder the other side. This way we can make solid connections to both sides of the board. I'm using M3 sized machine screws and hex nuts to secure the PCB to the Circuit Playground Express. This is a mechanical way to connect the two boards together and it's still possible to remove if we ever need to. To make more connections you can add as many screws and nuts as you like. A quick continuity test with the multimeter lets us know that we have solid electrical connections. This makes it so much easier to plug in jumper cables like from a micro servo. There's plenty of extra pins to work with so you can hook up all sorts of components. So if you're interested in making your own, check out the guide on the Adafruit Learning System. There's lots of projects there so definitely check it out if you're looking for inspiration. My PCB file is also available to download so you can make your own, links are in the description. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more DIY projects from Adafruit.